Uh, we're back with um, part two of the Melbourne Punter Show this week, and boys, we better tackle the most contentious issue that has brought a lot of debate this week. The 30-minute gap trial on Saturday, um, and the fallout from it, and Tabcorp slash Sky Channel's reaction to it. Um, I just want to give one little stat here that I found very interesting whilst I was reading through social media and whatnot. There was an article in the Financial Times, and here's just a quote from it. And it's discussing Tabcorp. Wagering is still Tabcorp's biggest business, generating $973 million, of which $895 million of it was from racing. Now, why, if such a high percentage of your business is relying on racing, why would you treat your customers the way that you did on Saturday? They're just, they're just, they're just a company that loves swinging their, swinging their dick, you know? They just, yeah. they just love it. They did it through the blackout. Yep. And they don't put, I mean, they put the shareholders first, they put the customers last, you know? It was just it was know, atrocious. I don't know if it was all one-way traffic on Saturday. I don't know if it was all their fault on Saturday. I, don't, I, mean, I, I, I listened, but I, mean, I didn't really think about whose fault it was much. But in my mind, because I remember... A month ago on the show, yeah. you, it was just you and me. Yeah. You, when they announced the trial, yeah. And you gave it the double thumbs up. Yeah. So my, my, my only up. concern is, is that they haven't been able to get together with Race in New South Wales. There's no agreement, so it's going to be a disaster for us in the chat room on the day, which is exactly what it was. Yeah. So it, a, a month back, we could tell it was going to be a disaster yeah. in terms of clashes with Sydney, and so, so to me, the, the two responsible parties are really Racing Victoria and Racing New South Wales. And I heard the interview with Phil Gate and David Attenborough. I thought he was yeah. a wildlife guy, not a tab guy. <laughs> but apparently he's a tab guy. And I, a lot of what he said yesterday, I, I, I could sort of under, I could I see where he was coming from. I missed the but, well, I don't, I mean, the issue is not the clash with Sydney for me. The no, issue no, no. Was, was, was the Melbourne races getting bumped to the two channels. And in one case, they were just milling behind the gates of the Gold Coast. Like, they, they promoted Sapphire Coast and Dolby yep. and bumped Sky uh, bumped um, Caulfield to Sky 2. But then when they, even when they didn't have a race on, they said, oh, we'll mill around the gates and climb into the Gold Coast while race 8 that Caulfield was on. Here's yeah. some stats. Well, here's, here's, so stuff. did you hear the Felgate interview? No. Can you succinct it for me? Use well, but basically what he said was... Um, Sky Channel had given the, the, the clock by the parties that agreed to it. Yeah. Okay. And on the weekend, Racing Victoria didn't agree. They ran their own times. Yeah. So they had to give priority to the clubs that agreed to the that committed to the clock. That so that that's their explanation. So I can. I mean, it's an explanation that you know is very narrow. Like it's it's one side and it doesn't take into account all the other issues, right? But but they, 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 I'm, just, I'm just telling you his explanation. Yeah, they had to give them a month's notice, right? So they had a month to think yeah. about how we're going to handle the sixth of February and for the month of the trials. How is Tab Sky John? How are we going to handle this? And that was their reaction after so what they did. Was, if I just go back to the thing, so his, his point at the end of the interview was that he was begging Racing New South Wales and Racing Victoria to get together. That Sky Channel don't care whether there's 30 minute gaps. 32, 34, 36, 40, they don't care as long as everyone commits to the clock. So that's that's what he was saying. So that, 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 that's the end of that part. That's no, 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 50 no, minute gaps are they good and have 10 meetings in between. Exactly. Now, yeah, yeah, no, right. Absolutely. Let, let, let's put it all on the table here because, so you, you inadvertently said something about your self interest, and it's, yeah. which, which is, this is all about self interest, but different camps. So you said, as soon as you like the idea of 30 minutes, you go, well, hang on, I'll bet Melbourne and Sydney there's going to be a clash, it's going to be a disaster for the chat room. Meanwhile, the Melbourne people say, well, we're, we're part of a consortium that has paid, put a lot of money into a media outlet yep. that hasn't got Sydney racing. They've spent a fortune on it, on racing.com, and they continue to spend a fortune on it. That's fact. That's just true. So they're going to try and put on a product which is the best possible product on that platform, which includes Bendigo then as their, as yep. their backup meeting. So that you haven't got big lots of dead air when everyone is going straight to Sydney and elsewhere. So it, it keeps people on board. So that's Melbourne's side of things. Sydney, on the other hand, as I mentioned last week, are totally wedded to Tabco. Yes. So uh, I would like to see that, I'm not sure if it's vice versa, David Attenborough talk and the other one drink a glass of water and and he's right. But at the yeah. moment, they're, they're, you've never ever heard, and here's the proof, a bit like... Uh, David Gately, I haven't heard him criticise a jockey. I've never heard Racing New South Wales criticise Tabcorp. Yet they're notionally 
only there for the betterment of racing New South Wales. So you've got all those mad factions. The difference with your self-interest is that's actually the best thing for racing. Mm. <laughs> so the best thing for racing is that most punters want to bet on Melbourne and Sydney. So that's the starting point. <laughs> the your part that you mentioned about, not your part, but you, what you said about uh, David Attenborough saying, well, it's not our fault. I mean, we just deal with the clock we're given to. So we have to give priority to those who stuck to the clock. Yeah, David. The, well, what he, said was, what he said was, Ralph, they were contractually obliged to put those clubs on the number one channel if they ran to the clock. So if I yeah. ring up to get a bet on a tap call, and I've just opened an account, I've put $100 in it, Will I get on before or after Zelko's man who rings through to have a bet? Well, that's all automated. I, I reckon they're on first. Yeah. Now, Melbourne's pools are this, and Narrow Mind's pools are wherever else was this. So, David, uh, Abner, please, come on. Just on. Well, I think my point is, Ralph, in the no. interview that, that I heard, that you. No, what, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is that he was as frustrated as. But if he, he was not, equally as frustrated. Yeah. So, if he's and I think he's, he, he is saying in yeah. his position. There's, he's, he feels like his hands are tied. There's and nothing he can do. In his position, he could tell Racing New South Wales to race every 30 minutes, and Racing New South Wales would say, yes, yeah, sir, three bags full, sir. Yeah, no, I don't, no, I don't think that's right. Racing New South Wales, this, this is a war between yeah. Racing New South Wales and Racing Victoria. Oh, no, but one's aligned with and corporates, and one's aligned with... No, tab. I get that. I, but what I'm saying is to blame the tab for this... Or Sky Channel, I think. I think the, the, the blame here has to has to fall to, to Racing Victoria and Racing New South Wales. But neither are not agree. They're not. They've got to agree. They, no, the key difference here is Racing Victoria because they have their own network control their own clock. Whereas Racing New South Wales succeeded that power over to Tabcorp. Tabcorp entirely control control the prop, clock. No, only if only if the clubs commit to it. So and then and the clubs have. Yeah, well, they've been probably strong arms into it. But I'm, the point is. Look, you can we, we can go around in circles here forever blaming yeah. whoever the no, no. point is is that the, the the two authorities with you know control all these to to to, do, to solve it to do something about it uh, are the principal all right. racing bodies which are Race Victoria and Racing New South Wales they can blame everyone else if they want but they've allowed this to happen and it's and it's it's not helping anyone. Hang on, mate. Well, I, I, tell, can anyone tell me who's like is this benefit to anyone? No one. The, that, ex that half explains Saturday, but explain Sunday and Monday to me. Because on Sunday, race three at Sale had 27,000 in the wind pool, and there was a harness race from Manawatu in New Zealand that, that had $3,885. Manawatu harness went on Sky 1, Sale got bumped to Sky 2. Yesterday, there were two races at Tatura that were bumped off Sky 1 for, it's a for some it's a deliberate, so It's a deliberate point. Yeah, yeah that, and, and then there was only five minutes. They're all being spiteful, Dan. I, I, want, I want to just correct the record. I'm not defending Sky or the tab. They, they're all being spiteful. They're all yeah. being yeah. running their own agendas. They're all being... Like, for, I'm just saying to them, for, for the love of God, take a deep breath yeah. and think about racing here. Are you not going to be happy till there's not a fucking punter left on the face of the earth? I mean, I've had a gut full of it. Like, whether it's Sky, Tab, yep. all get in a room and sort the problem out and stop making your customers bloody miserable. That's a very good spray. Well, that's a very good spray. You know one thing yeah, that you yeah, did yeah. say there, Potts, that Mr. Attenborough didn't say through his entire interview? He called them punters. At not one stage did he call us customers. Mm. We're, we're their customers. If we stop, if we take our customer away from Tab, tab Corp, I'm not sure what they've got left. Well, I, well, I was just going to say, I, just, I thought it was petulant as I stated, but there was something happened during the week as well that um, a website, I think punters.com, put, put up um, Hilton's oh, yeah. last oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. with a bit of lovely narrative, but it was very funny. I sat back and watched them all, and I said, look out for when he says this, and on his last day of calling poor old Hilton. And, um, <laughs> and a day later, I saw, I think it was Jimmy Jordan from Sportsbed said to the, on Twitter, said, oh, that, has that link expired? I can't watch it. I said, no, Sky made us take it down. Yeah, because it was there. Fun boys. Fun yeah. boys, yeah, Sky made us take it down. It's, um, yeah, now, this mm. is, this is uh, so that, that's a person, isn't it? Don't read him out. No. But I, it says a genuine email or somewhere, and I do know him, but I sort of, I'm not going to. Saw Twitter go off on Saturday with the race clashes. I am up on Sunshine Coast to catch some rain. Uh, naturally went to the Time Island Merchant or Surf Club. Uh, my estimates around 60 to 70 punters settled in for the day. As the clashes rolled out, there was close to pub tab rage a few times. The club staff were getting abused as coordinating audio as well as vision became impossible. Audio of Dolby as Melbourne race nearly caused a riot. 
Clearly Sky were being smart with Sky 2 solution, but they will find their clients. Pubs and clubs will be up in arms about this. As for turnover, I guess a third of the crowd moved across the room to watch the cricket and rugby sevens in disgust before the best races even came on. Uh, I'll listen to your old show, Jury Duty. Please, I like saying Jeff Timmick's good. Dennis Lilly's old, old bowling spot. Uh, I think they all missed the point that this stuff has simply alienated the lifeblood of the industry, the punter. If my experience was re repeated, tipping one to three, yes, then many thousands of punters just found something else to do. Listening to Jake Norton now for sometimes leave me outraged uh, about the, uh, I'm just approaching it, accepting criticism, alternative views are abridged to, um, sorry, I don't want to get anything about Jake. Um, how people attended Saturday compared, oh, right. How many people attended Saturday compared to the tens of thousands of pissed off? So in other words, his point is, it doesn't matter who went to Caulfield and how many went to Caulfield, I actually happened to go to Caulfield. Yeah, well, but I'll... in the biggest game of punters betting around Australia, it's fucking pittance. Mm. So, but if you work for a race club, you would say, oh, well, the attendance is up 5% in order. It means nothing. His suggestion that everyone just tune into racing.com was laughable. It's not just about his Caulfield experience. They gave us the Caulfield Cup and Guineas races where half the pub club crowd had gone home to three families uh, when he put them on at 6.10, could go on. Uh, anyway, hope this goes away. <laughs> uh, yesterday, one meeting in New South Wales and Vic, and they clashed yep. three times. So there you There's go. I've just got two more points there. I, I went to sale on Sunday, and I really noticed the difference with the 30-minute gaps. Big, big paradise, wasn't it? Was it it was perfect. There was oh. just enough. There was five minutes after the five minutes after the race, then you started betting. They, there was the little wave when you went up. They came into the yard. They finished looking at them in the yard. You had the big wave that came through, and then two minutes before the off, they were all out there following their spot. It was perfect for that. I'm not saying it's perfect on Saturday, but for the rest of the week, half an hour gaps to the way forward. And I tweeted that out on Saturday, Ralph, about if you're a young bloke and you're sitting there on a Saturday and you've got the option to watch the Auckland Nines on 501 or the clusterfuck that was 519, it's <laughs> fucking not even a debate. I can watch this. They're betting... You've got to ring up, admittedly, although the rest of the corporates have now worked that loophole and they're going through that. Or I can sit there on my phone on my tablet, betting on the nines, where there's a heap of action that's colourful and I can sit there with half a dozen of my mates. So we've had our go here. Uh, Peter Volandis has had his go. Pete, I just bought my cap to somebody who could just put out something. How many years has Moody Valley? I was on course MC there for three years. Their 30 minute gaps are just sensational there. Yeah. Friday nights. Mm. And so you just knew it worked. Yeah. Peter Volandis, the headline is, Peter Volandis yeah. rules out racing New South Wales adopting 30-minute gaps due to, due to jockey welfare turnover concerns. Well, there's some facts that will, won't hold Mr Volandis' argument here. <laughs> the UK have raced on half, a dozen, half an hour gaps for 250 years. I don't have too many jockeys falling over at Royal Ascot. Macau, where the weather's a lot tougher than what it is here, run on 25-minute gaps. Hong Kong race on 30 minute gaps. I don't see a mass exodus from so Hong back Kong. back to you though, back Hong to you, Kong's to criticise you, you were too generous to Greg Nichols a couple of weeks ago saying that he was referring to the Nick McKenzie and Richard Bakers of the world. <laughs> He's referring to that type of crap that gets written because someone yeah. important has said um, it without gets question. Challenged. Yeah. Now, at worst, let's say boss of uh, Sutherland, um, James Sutherland, yes. says something a bit that, similar to that. Robert Craddock would quote it, and next to it would be a Robert Craddock opinion yeah. piece saying why that's bonkers. If James Sutherland say, came out and said, oh, we think T20's dangerous yeah. because we might hit the umpire in the head with the ball. That's it. Like, they well, tear him apart. So Sam Sutherland, like, like on a, you know, I'm not sure how many times a year, but I've seen it enough to know that it must be yeah. a few, fronts press conferences and cops hard questions. Yeah, James Sutherland. When was the, yeah, yeah. When was the last, and so does... McLaughlin, I think, like he, or he would go on the shows or whatever, and he'll cop some hard questions. When was the last time Peter Volandis went on any show and actually got grilled? Oh, I, I asked oh. a couple of ones. He went on the Punisher show about five it, it, years it, it, ago, it, it, and the boys went to pieces. He was on Ray Hadley. Yeah. 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 Ray Hadley. Yeah. 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 So, so this is a good point. So I've just got an announcement to make, boys. I just, um, for, for those that watched the, the promo that Dan Jumpy and I shot earlier for the uh, DK and Potts uh, product, it will be available tomorrow. Boom. Boom. Yeah, ready tomorrow. for Sandy. So the Ray Hadley interview, if you haven't heard it, do yourself a favour. Especially the, if you're a fan of comedy. The, the Ray Hadley and Peter Flanders. But in fairness, this is what we have to remember sometimes, that we are a smallish part of the punting landscape because we understand the dynamics of wagering. Now, I wouldn't call Ray Hadley a, 
anyone who takes a short step be, no. in any way, shape or form, whether you like him or dislike yep. him, right? And he obviously goes back a bit with Peter Vlandis, and that's all fine. So Peter Vlandis rings up and says, this is the problem with in-play betting. No worries, you're asking this question. Now, this, the devil's in the detail a bit here. He said, so what you're talking about is, that, you know, a punter who wants to, uh, to uh, back a horse uh, leading at the throne from meter mark or something, right? No, but what it actually proves, now Ray Hadley clearly has been betting all his life. But he had no, obviously like, no research at all. Yes. For that. It was just the most ridiculous things. Yeah, it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. No, no, but just as, as the week before on Four Corners, it didn't touch anything about the uh, educated punters in yeah. terms. Ray Hadley would say, well, I've got Peter Vlandis on. I'm a punter. I'll just ask him what I know and he can answer it. Now, that's actually fair enough. You're not, like, you're doing three and a half hours a day by yourself. Yeah. And, you know, whatever research you've got, and you, you think you've got a handle on the sport. And where I'm leading to, like, I was told I worked with Brendan <laughs> at uh, Priomo and just yeah. did some stuff during the World Cup. I had no idea, and I followed racing all my life, about the intricacies of in-play betting. Yeah. The best way to explain it to people, and it won't get through this channel, because most, you assume most people watch this as yeah. anyway. But if you had said, now, okay, Peter, superimposed behind the barriers in the Doncaster is four to one. When he's last in the turn, he's ten to one. Yeah, he's last. He's no way he's four to one chance. That the, no, the, and people will bet you ten to one. Yeah, Peter, can you tell me how that's an integrity concern if punters want to match each other having a bet? Now that's the question. Now you can't blame Ray Hadley because to me that's an intricate part. And what Betfair, their biggest problem to me is that they haven't bothered trying to educate punters to date. Well, they did a while ago with via a friend of ours, and Scotty Ferguson, when he was the head of education oh, yeah, there. Yeah. And of course, when various no, management structures a couple of years ago, when the management structures is all changed, the races tipping champagne on each other's yeah. heads, and that they got them down the bogan path. Betfair is a sophisticated product. Yes, and it's it's uh, it's one thing to understand racing. It's another thing to understand in play betting and the intricacies of it. And I was having, and for can deal and you were doing this. I actually watched Rildas on Saturday in the run. I don't bet in the run. Yeah. I was watching in the run, thinking, well, you're going to get back to last. You'll be you'll be big odds at the turn. And I'm actually at the track, so I've got no delay. Right. And I'm still 380 on the turn. Right. So in other words, the people in Betfair are pretty sophisticated yeah. against each other. So, well, but the reality was, superimposed would be much better. At last of the term, and that makes it interesting to some people. And to say it's an integrity concern is bullshit. And for Peter McGoran to be head of racing and not understand wagering dynamics that much, yeah, is embarrassing. Well, he's not a punter. But, 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 no, no, but that's right. not a punter. If, you, if you're on a bank, then if you're on a bank, you got a lot of money. You don't have a mortgage, but you understand how mortgages work. This is my point. Peter McGoran needs to understand the dynamics of it, whether he's a punter or not. Well, but these are, these are the, 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 the same issues with that interview, right? and, and there's a really scary aspect of it for me. The first, the, 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 the most obvious issue, the problem is that there's Peter Volandis talking passionately about the pitfalls and the, the disaster it'll be if in-play betting on sports is allowed to happen. When his sport, which would have been a good question for Ray to ask, why are you allowing in-play betting in racing, Peter? That's been well, happening. Right, and then... And there's no, but in fairness to, um, I'll be the last one to go for it too, but in fairness, he, it's been allowed reluctantly. He said that he doesn't want it. And it's right, I mean, it's affecting, you know, he should have said, so it's, his biggest problem, Peter Leanies, is that it's going to affect racing's revenues. You know, yeah, racing's not, the in playing, being the horse racing, is not really an integrity concern. No. So speaking of which, on. did you look at the devil and the other the Tadcorp report? Paramutual, down, yeah. fixed odds, up. Ah, yeah, of course. No, of course. But this is the point. The tab have no incentive to drop the prices of the paramutual. The only people who've got the incentive are the government and the racing industry yes. because tab are going to keep making money. But the racing industry's funding is hitched to paramutual betting that people are leaving. Yeah. So can I just go back to the Ray Hadley the, 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 the scary part for me is that I understand where Ray's coming from, yep. being a Sydney boy and having listened to him for a long time. Of course. He's passionate about rugby league and, you know, that's where he built his name and he, do, he just doesn't want to see it in, in the firing line. So he, he doesn't really care who he treads on on the way yep. through and what errors are made on the thing. But the problem is, is that 2GB have unbelievable influence with politicians. He just said, well, in that interview, didn't he? Who will go and lobby? Yeah. 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 Go and, uh, Mr. Trudge, she's the minister. All right, really, I'll do that then. They'll yeah. be straight, yeah. he'll get an audience straight in, like, and it's, you know, like, yeah. so there's someone who, I mean, he's got a, 
particular agenda. He doesn't really care about the merits of the argument. Yeah. He just doesn't want to see any, you know, potentially corrupt betting happening on rugby That's league. Right, it's his true. baby, you know. Right? Plus, look, I'm, for those who don't know, I have traded live sport on both sides of the fence, both as working for bookies, I work for Sporting Index in England, where it's um, online in play, and also over here in um, Australia for, for sports bet. I did US sports and, and whatnot. The blokes who watch this stuff for a living and trade it, they can spot something suspect from four miles away. It's the same as blokes that watch races every day. If you watch enough of it, if something doesn't look right, you'll spot it in 10 seconds. Yeah. The same as what we saw with this, and it was the biggest load of horseshit during the tennis when they've said, oh, pennies have pulled the, the mixed doubles down. Like, the limits on those events are 500. Like, they've had 2,000 on it if they're lucky. But again, the devil's in the detail of, of uh, in that interview, to, uh, away from the comedy, when... Peter Valandis gets his highest and says, well, Ray, as you know, we got uh, Ray, uh, Ray uh, who's the chairman's job? Murray, Ray, Ray, Ray Murray. We got Ray Thanks, Murray. Ray. Yeah, we got Ray Murray to help out, and that's how we found that, you know, something the Ray about yeah. the, uh, the first try. Ryan, Ryan Tandy. About the, yeah, the penalty, Ryan Tandy. Tandy. Yeah. penalty first score in play. Well, doesn't that tell you that the people who found it were through having a bet through some yeah. other cameras and... That, that's why it's important to actually just have your surveillance systems right and let as many people bet on your product as possible because as you say, it was a bet, it was any award will come up. It was an outrageous example because it was a failed attempt at a fix. <laughs> it didn't work. They gave away the penalty on purpose. And yeah, the and they just the it <laughs> um, But plus, the, the thing with the political influence, yes, Ray Hadley does have political influence, but I'm tipping the uh, our friend uh, Mr McFarlane over there at the... Australian Wagering Council and the backers of that organisation will also have a fair amount of political clout too going the other way. And it's whether, I see, because Matt Taylor asked earlier on Twitter, he said there's the O'Farrell review at the moment, which a lot of people have uh, sent into, and what, what do you think is going to happen? Will they legalise it, yes or no? And when is it, Peter Valandi's thing that I don't get is when has it ever worked when you've tried to outlaw something and police it? rather than legalise, regulate and tax it. Well, when, I, when I worked there a long time ago though, when they first came out here, Paddy Power and things like yeah. that, the things in the background said, wait till yeah, what, yeah. what in-play being happens, you know? And they've been just waiting slowly, slowly, and then now it's come up to a head, but I think they're under the impression it's going to be bigger than Ben Hur. And, and, and it will be. Yeah. Like, well, I'll, I'll put this in this way. When I was in England, and this was five years ago, and especially on some sports, Ladbrokes will tell you that during the big bash, 95% of their hold was in play, and that's with having to ring up. And it, some of the Premier League football matches over there, for, for some of the non-shop firms, would be easily 70% of the hold. Well, I'll just make a point on that, um, about what you thought and, and what a lot of people thought. I think part of the success of the big bash was it actually wasn't uh, tainted by gambling advertisements, yep. both on and off. Uh, as in, you know, the, you didn't have the Bet365 yeah. in the Australians and, and nor in, it was KFC ads and so forth. Or the tennis with William Hill. Exactly. They made a concerted effort. Yeah. And if people want a bet, you go and have a bet. Yeah. But it wasn't shoved down your throat. Remember about five or six years ago, if you went to the MCG, you were yeah. bombarded. People said, fucking enough. Yeah. And you know what? They stopped it. So I want to think this, uh, where they've gotten their bland and milk and honey mindset, that it's going to be, you know, what it's going to be, because the regulators are onto it. Gambling's got a stench about it. The from the Ryan Tandy to other things, I'm talking about gambling away from racing. So that's where racing actually their biggest opportunity is to say, you know what, we actually are a wagering sport. And just Peter, if it's a bit of the land is, the way a paramutual market decides and the favourite is the market decides. And the same thing when it comes to deciding what your customers want to bet on. If customers want to bet on the long run, let them. Because as you say, if there's an integrity problem, it'll come up. Look, I think, I think the in-play betting stuff's... you got to... It's, it's hard to know what the, what the truth is because a massive percentage of the um, liquidity in those markets is trading money. Yeah. Buying and selling, buying and selling, buying yeah, and selling, yeah, buying and selling, buying and selling. But, but that, Particularly we'll in, the long, in the long run events. So the, the actual... Once you reverse the bet backs out, there's I don't know how much is actually left, right? But... Um, 
you, you said the point about the Australian wagering cancel on 2GB. Yeah. I'm telling you now, if they're the only two parties at the table and that's who the politicians are going to decide, it's, it's a no contest, Jesse. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and then play betting won't be happening. It'll be fucking banned so quickly that you, get, like, you, don't, you don't think that the corporates have got enough money to oh. help some of the campaigns? 2GB completely controls the political agenda. Oh, I can't say, of course, the codes are pushing through because I know. Yeah, it's the wagering bros, how fat it was. Huge. Yeah. I don't want, they want the funding. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I like, there'll be well. plenty of lobbying going on. Like, it'll be interesting to see what when's, does When's this report coming out? Uh, is... I think Matty Taylor said in the coming weeks. So, I was so it's an agency. I was a cracking little lunch, uh, and it was a little, and someone who knows the Sydney media landscape mm. was just talking about how much Paul, it's probably, you know, let's go back a decade, mm. you know, the, 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 the big radio players have over the whole state, and they'll give an example after example, and you just went, it's, and so I totally, without living in Sydney, yeah. I have no doubt yeah, you are 100% right. Well, I've, only, I've only been in Melbourne a short time, yeah. but Melbourne's got nothing, 2GB is so dominant, it's frightening, yeah. like they, they can, they are just, like, they win the rate, every survey in every time slot by so far, it's not even it's funny, and the politicians style. are terrified yeah. of them. Whereas, like, Ross is the dominant one here, but Ross is Knock about punter, mm. you know, he's just a funny bloke. And Neil Mitchell doesn't use that power. Yeah. So, and also there's probably two, there's the ABC guy, John Fane as well. So there's not that, but as and it's yeah, closer. You only have to turn it on. Yeah, much closer. Than than you know, I, I think on. that we've yeah. missed the key of that interview though, and it's something that we all really need to look at. All punters lose 20%. <laughs> oh. I think oh. we all need to go away and have a real hard look at ourselves, yeah. boys. Not only what Pete is. He stuck up for the punters, as Richie Irvine mm. said the other day. Yeah. He's on, so but but sometimes he does say so. He does, yeah, he does. He can't defend him. He makes him come off. Oh, I can see. Oh. Between both of you, that's the problem with doing soft cock interviews all the time. Yeah. And probably, I'm just assuming, that behind the scenes, not sitting down with enough smart punters and saying, right, how can we play this better? Yeah. Because, as you, as you rightly say, he was going to brought in the minimum bet rule. For all the sticking up we've done for Victoria, we're not parochial because Victoria being the one yeah, we've they're dragging the hills here. have done nothing because they're along with the corporate bookmakers. So Pete has actually And to his credit in that process he talked to the big punters. Exactly. So well, he picks his he picks his mark. My question is why doesn't he talk to those big punters and say, Right, I explain the landscape to me a bit better yeah. and I'd be staggered, my gut feel is this will be brought in because the devil in the dead old was Tabcorp did say if it's brought in and yeah, it's right down the very bottom. Yeah, we're well, not going to lift the other. But, I think, but the thing is, every word that Peter Valenti said in an interview was tailored to Ray Hadley's audience. He knew that he would caught massive no, criticism yeah. from from any serious punter that listened mm, to it. Yeah. But that's for every serious punter listening to it. There's a thousand or ten thousand yeah. average Joe's, Joe's and they're the ones who are anti sports gambling. Yeah, they are. So absolutely, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's yeah. going to be racing point. There was. Yeah, I've lost my train of thought with it. Um, <laughs> we'll have to leave <laughs> it until next week then. It was going to be a beauty. It was. <laughs> All this. At RT Ralphie. Take at Winbet Dan. DK and Potts, remember this. Yeah. Get on board oh, tomorrow. We're alive. We're, right. we're, we're, we're off. I can't wait. Oh. I like that meeting tomorrow. There's a couple there I like. So we'll be, we'll be sweet. We're going to start on the upward climb again, Potts. And just, we're going to finish off. That's what I meant to finish off with. We're going to finish off with the segment, What a Great Country. Both positive and negative. I'll give the negative for what a great country. I got a $152 fine off the highway patrol on Friday because I was more than three metres away from a running vehicle when I went into 7-Eleven to get a drink. If this isn't a fucking complete nanny state, I'm giving the game away. <laughs> but then you get the, the plus side of the what a great country. As, um, as uh, I think you tweeted it out, that Damien Oliver just uh, right. picking up uh, Williams... Craig Williams rides down there at Hobart ben, yesterday. Ben Allen and the Provincials. Provincials. Yeah. There you go. Here's my What a Great Country. Can you see that there? It doesn't really focus well. It's just me having lunch with Mark Eller with the Sydney Harbour Bridge <laughs> on the background on Friday. What a great country. What, what a, a great, great country. country. All right, Hunters, we'll see you again next oh, week. Right.